In the world's deepest gold mines, people work at a depth of over 13,000 feet. The deepest oil well on the planet is the Z44 Chevo oil and gas well. Located in the Russian Far East, it goes more than 40,000 feet down. That's 15 Burj Khalifa towers put on top of each other. One of the world's deepest and most famous artificial holes is the Kola Superdeep Borehole. Its depth is also over 40,000 feet. If you dropped a coin down the shaft, it would be falling for 50 seconds before it reached the bottom. A mere nine inches across, this well was created for scientific purposes. People wanted to drill through the Earth's crust and see what lay below. They managed to pass only one third of the way. After that, the temperature reached 356 degrees Fahrenheit and the drill couldn't operate any longer. But what if, by some miracle, you managed to drill a hole all the way through Earth? You've got through 8,000 miles of molten magma and solid rock. You've withstood the temperatures of almost 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit and extreme pressure, more than 300 million times more than at the surface of the planet. The well is wide enough for an adult to pass without having to squeeze through. It's also perfectly straight. The hole's walls are incredibly strong and won't collapse or melt. And then, while standing on the well's edge, admiring your handiwork, you slip and fall into the gaping abyss. Considering gravity, acceleration, and the Earth's diameter, it would take you just 42 minutes to fall through the entire planet. You'd reach the maximum speed of 18,000 miles per hour at the Earth's center. And in less than an hour, you'd emerge on the other side of the planet. Unfortunately, in the real world, you might not even get through the first mile of your fall. The Coriolis effect is to blame. Our planet's surface moves at a speed of 1,000 miles per hour at the equator, but Earth's insides don't need to move that fast. Picture a racetrack. Traveling along its inner part, you'll drive a shorter distance than when moving along the outer side. It means that soon after falling into the hole, your speed will become greater than that of the hole around you. After traveling for one mile, you'll crash into the side of the well and begin to careen and bounce off its sides. If you were halfway to the center of the Earth at that point, your speed would be 1,500 miles per hour faster than the walls of the hole. But let's say you know about this effect and manage to avoid it by digging a hole directly through the Earth's poles. Only in this case will the gravity pull you straight down. On your way to the Earth's center, you'll see tons of cool stuff. First, you funnel past countless rabbit warrens and mole tunnels. By the way, a mole can dig a 60-foot long tunnel in a day. When you're about 10 feet down, you have a near crash with a giant earthworm. If the creature was standing, it would reach your waist. At a depth of 26 feet, you dash past the tunnels dug under the mole man's home. William Little, a British civil engineer, spent about 40 years to create an enormous web of caverns and burrows stretching far beyond his house. Almost twice deeper, and you're speeding by a Nile crocodile. This reptile digs the deepest burrows among all animals. You hardly have enough time to recover from this shock when you fly by a, is it an underground farm? Indeed, you spot vegetables and herbs growing there. You zip through the bottom of the deepest swimming pool in the world. It's the Y40 diving pool in Monte Grotto Terme, Italy. It goes 131 feet down. For some reason, it's not filled with water at the moment, and you need a mere three seconds to reach its bottom. When you're more than 500 feet underground, you spot people lounging in a hotel room. It's Sala Silvermine, the world's deepest hotel built in a converted silver mine. At a depth of 3,300 feet, you start to experience immense pressure. It feels as if four elephants were piled up on your head. After that, you can continue your journey only if you're wearing a suit that can protect you from the ever-increasing heat and air pressure. You move deeper and see the Homestake gold mine almost 5,000 feet below the surface. Before closing, it was the deepest and largest gold mine in North America. In the 1960s, scientists detected and counted tiny subatomic particles from the sun. They did it in a lab located inside the mine. After falling for another second or so, you reach permafrost. 
It's a thick, permanently frozen layer of soil that doesn't warm up even in the summer. It mainly occurs in polar regions and is the thickest in northern Siberia. Now you're more than 6,000 feet below the surface and you still come across some living creatures. Those are springtails, teeny eyeless insects that live in the Krubera Cave in Georgia. But the deepest multicellular animal you meet lives at a depth of 11,800 feet in the Tau Tona Mine in South Africa. Tiny, but incredibly hardy, this worm can deal with extreme temperatures and dehydration. Four miles down, and you dash through the oceanic crust. It's the part of the Earth's crust that lies under the ocean and is much thinner than the continental crust. Twice deeper than that, and the tunnel leads you through a pool of scorching hot molten rock. That's Yellowstone Supervolcano's magma chamber, below Yellowstone National Park. It means you're about to leave Earth's outermost layer, the crust, behind. The deeper you go, the hotter it gets. At the boundary with the mantle, about 18 miles below the surface, the temperature reaches 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you're moving through Earth's upper mantle. The pressure there reaches 10,000 atmospheres, like more than 130 elephants standing on your head. But it's nothing compared with the lower mantle pressure, 240,000 atmospheres. The temperatures keep rising as well. Near the boundary with the planet's core, it's already more than 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The outer core is 1,500 miles thick and is made mostly of iron and nickel in their liquid form. There, Earth's magnetic field is 50 times more powerful than at the surface. You are more than 3,000 miles down underground when you reach Earth's inner core. It's incredibly dense and spins faster than the rest of the planet. It's almost as hot as the surface of the sun, 9,800 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure inside the inner core is 3 million times greater than on the surface. And still, you somehow make it through this solid ball of metal and back to the surface. In real life though, you'd be crushed by immense pressure and burned by incredible temperatures soon after the beginning of your fall. No suit would be able to protect you from such extreme conditions. Even if neither pressure nor scorching heat influenced you, you'd still have several serious problems on your hands, and all of them would be connected with air. For one thing, it would be air resistance. It would pull you to a stop long before you reach the core. But a much worse issue would be air pressure. The deeper you'd get down the hole, the more air would be above your head, and the higher its pressure would be. At a depth of 30 miles, it would be as great as that at the ocean bottom. After several hundred miles, the air would turn into an almost solid plug blocking your way. But let's say you knew about this problem in advance and pulled all the air out of the well before plunging in. And now you're moving in a vacuum, dressed in a special suit with a large oxygen supply. Still, you're going to come across something bizarre on your way. During your fall, you'll notice that the force pulling you downward starts to weaken. And once you reach the center of the planet, it'll disappear whatsoever. Earth is an almost perfect sphere. That's why the gravitational forces coming from the mass surrounding the planet's center counteract one another. Feeling equal pulls from all sides, you'll become weightless. Paradoxically, you'll be floating in the air and moving at breakneck speed at the same time. Soon, you'll travel through Earth's inner core and keep going until you get to the other side. In any case, this situation is entirely hypothetical. The very idea of building an 8,000 mile long tunnel sounds implausible. You'd need to find where to store all the material pulled out of the hole, including Earth's molten insides. You'd also have to ensure your tunnel wouldn't collapse while going through the planet's liquid layers. Its walls would have to be made of a material that could withstand the heat of more than 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So far, no substance on Earth can remain intact at such temperatures.